Hi everyone. So in this video, we will start discussing about the test series. So we, whatever that is necessary for your test series, whatever that uh, necessary things are there, which you should know before writing the test series. So that we are going to discuss. And during my time, I attempted roughly around 180 plus test to prepare for gate. And if you are someone who is believing it, then it's good. You can watch the video. If you are someone who don't believe it, then simply you can skip the video and it would be good for you. So if you are someone who is staying in the video, so let's discuss now. Let's start with some important points. What are the important points which aspirants usually ignore? So first thing is that you can write the test in your PC only. So try writing the test in your PC. If you are someone who is not having the PC, then you try arranging it for some, your, some of your friends. And if you are someone who is college, then it would be very easy to get your PC, to get a PC for 2-3 hours from your friends only. Okay. So for 2-3 hours, you can arrange it or you can go to the cyber cafe and there you can write down your test. If uh, in the worst to worst condition that if you are not able to arrange a PC. So at least try writing the test in your PC. Okay, because in the main, main examination, you are going to write the test in PC only. Use a mouse. Okay, so you can get this mouse from Amazon in roughly around 200 rupees, you will get the mouse. So use the mouse, not the touchpad. So don't do this mistake. During my profession, I used to use touchpad, touchpad only. So there will be virtual calculator. So there will be virtual calculator. So to do the calculation, we are not going to use the touchpad. We are going to use the mouse. Okay, so try writing the test with the mouse. Okay. Now use the virtual calculator which is embedded with the, the particular test series. Okay, so in every test series there will be a virtual calculator. So that calculator only you need to use. If you are using your mobile calculator or some other calculator, that would be of no use. So use the calculator which is embedded in your test series only. Now try writing the test in the scribble pad. Okay, and uh, if that is not uh, permissible for you, then at least write four to five full length test in scribble pad. So those final test that you are going to write in your January. So those tests should be written in scribble pad. Now do not run behind these scribble pads. Okay, th this will cost you a lot of rupees. So what you can do, you can get a 200 to 300 like a rough number I am telling. You get the A4 sheets. Okay, so I have the example. So like let's just say this is a A4 sheet. You just, you just get in 60, 70 rupees, you will get somewhat around 200 A4 sheets, right? 200 to 250 A4 sheets in 60, 70 rupees only. So you get a A4 sheet and what you need to do, this is the A4 sheet. You just fold it from half. You just fold it from half and then cut it. So from one A4 sheet, you can get two, pa two papers. So in these papers only, you need to write down your full length test. Okay, you get the paper and just, just table it. So in these full, in these paper only, you should write your full length test. At least full length test. If you if you are writing topic wise and subject wise test in these full length in these papers only, then also then it is more better for you. So do not go for rough notebook. Okay, don't don't uh, write down your test series in your rough notebook because there will be some questions. Let's just say like uh, digital electronic questions are a bit lengthy. I wouldn't say a bit lengthy, but uh, you need to write down a lot of things. So in your rough notebook, you have everything on one paper only, and it would be easy for you. But in scribble pad. You need to, you might need to use two or three pages. So how you are performing with those two, three pages, that is also important. So that's why I say always use scribble pads. Okay. And I have the examples, uh, which I cannot show you as of now, but I had this much of scribble pads because I used to write all the taste in scribble pads only. So I did not bring these scribble pads. I just had the A4 sheet and I just uh, made two parts of that and then, then I just cut it. Okay, so these are the important points which you, which you should take care and usually aspirants ignore it. Now let's go to the next part. So how the test series will help you in your preparation. So first thing you will get to know your minor mistake. Now, no matter from wherever you have studied, no matter how intelligent you are, there are some minor mistakes which you don't even know and that you will get to know once you write the test series. Okay, and it will analyze, it will help you to analyze your performance in time bound. Like you will have a certain time in which you need to attend the question. So it will help you like how good you are in attempting the problem if in a time bound. Like let's just say if there is a question and you are given one hour to that, then you will be able to attempt it. But how you will attempt the question in the time bound that you will get to know only by writing the test series. Now it will make you aware of the topics which you are not comfortable with. Like I am comfortable with the complete chapter or I am com comfortable with the complete subject, but uh, there might be some topics which I am not comfortable with that. So that you will get to know once you write down the test series. Okay, so that is also a very important part. It will help you to improve your problem solving skills. So there will be a lot of problems which you will be solving in test series and, and uh, in a good test series, those problems will be apart from PYQ, right? Those problems will be apart from PYQ. And if you are solving some problems apart from PYQ, then certainly you are solving some new problems and your problem solving skills will also develop. 
it will help you handling the pressure situation in your examination so the situation that you are facing in your test series the same kind of pressure the same kind of situation you will certainly you will certainly face in the examination as well in my examination what happened was like uh, in first 25 minutes i was able to solve only two problems only two questions okay which might be very demotivating for you in the examination in first 25 you are in first 25 minutes you are able to solve only two problems this would be very demotivating for you but these kind of situation i had already faced in my test series and like in some typical test series i already had faced these kind of situation that where i am not able to solve the problems so i was not uh, demotivated there i was not thinking that i am not able to score well in the examination i just thought that okay it is happening it would be happening with other people as well so let's take the fair attempt you are going you are not going to mess up your 180 minutes you may mess up your 30 minutes you may you may mess up your 40 minutes but if you have prepared well you are not going to mess up your 180 minutes of your examination you can mess up 60 minutes but 120 minutes you will still have and you can do much better in that particular examination so these kind of situation you will understand these kind of things you will understand once you write that test series i have written the test series then i am able to tell all these things but if you write the test series you will be understanding that how i will be attempting attempting at tougher question in the examination how i will be handling the pre pressure situation in the examination okay and also you will certainly get to know about your competition that uh, if uh, you attempt a tougher test then you you might be thinking that i am the only guy who is not able to solve the problem but once you see the result you will get to know that all these guys were also not able to see solve the problem so in my examination when i was under pressure when i was not able to solve the problem i just thought one thing that if i am not able to solve the problem i have prepared well then certainly there will be a lot of guys who are not able to solve that particular problem so i don't need to worry if i am messing up then certainly other people are also messing up i just need to perform better than them that's it so other people might be demotivated but i am not going to be demotivated that's the temperament you should carry and this temperament will develop only if you write enough kind of enough test series right now how to write the test so topic wise test you will never feel like that that i am scoring lesser rank in that okay so that you will take as a practice resource only that you are solving topic wise test as a practice resource you will not think much about your rank even if you are having 50 ranks 60 ranks 70 rank do not care about that because there will be aspirant who is having only a particular subject as a better subject only like let's just say i am comfortable in signals and systems and i just attempted that particular paper so i will perform well in that but your in your final examination there will be 10 subjects so your competition is with those guys who are good enough in all those 10 subjects so do not feel like that that i am not able to solve problems of a particular subject so i might be lagging so that will not happen okay so do not feel your score like in topic wise test and subject wise test subject wise test are important but do not feel like that that i am performing less or i am getting lesser rank than it would be hampering my final rank now it would not hamper your final rank you should treat your full length test as a main examination only those full length test will be there treat those as a main examination so whatever the rank you score there that matters so the rank that you are getting there in that full length test that will reflect in your final examination so treat all your full length test as a final examination only okay and this remember one thing not a lot of people will agree with me uh, like a lot of people will not agree with me but uh, gate examination is always a exam of accuracy not speed they are not going to test your speed like in gate examination from a good aspirant i never heard that that i knew this question but because of the time i was not able to solve it like in j advance it will never happen that someone would say that uh, uh, question paper was well and i i was able to solve those problems but uh, i did not have the time it will not it will not happen in your gate examination okay so these examination are never like a good competitive examination is never uh, is never a game of speed it is always about accuracy okay uh, if you agree with me or you don't agree i uh, i do not know but as of my experience you will never run out of the time you will never feel like that i did not have enough time yeah i was not able to solve the problems but uh, i would certainly have enough time okay so try running behind your accuracy try getting the problems correctly rather than like i need to solve all the problems don't run behind that okay if you are someone who is very intelligent if you have prepared uh, enough so then try solving all the problems so what happened in my case was that uh, i was not able to get my accuracy above 75% no matter if i was solving with good amount of patience or if i was solving in speed 
I was never able to get my accuracy above 75 percent. Even if I am attempting 50 questions, then also I am getting 75 percent accuracy only. If I am attempting 40 questions, then also I am getting 75 percent accuracy only. So what I did? So what I did? I just thought that. So look, this is very unconventional way. Okay. So what I did? I just thought that if I am not able to improve the accuracy, then let's try increasing the number of attempt. So I started attempting all the problems, all the problems which I could solve. So roughly around 50, 59 to 60, 61 problems, I was at least attempting these many problems in the test series only. I am not asking you to attempt. If you are good with accuracy, if you just solve 50 problems and you are getting 45 correct, then it is good for you. This is your strategy. I am telling my strategy. So I was feeling like that I am not good with the accuracy. So what I did was, I just started attempting a lot of problems. Okay. So when I was attempting a lot of problems, still my accuracy was near about 70 to 75 percent only, but my score started getting increased just because I was solving more problems. So there I did not focus on accuracy. There I started focusing on speed because I needed to solve more problems. So it depends on you. You will get to know whether you want to focus on speed or you want to focus on accuracy that you will get to know once you attempt the examination. Okay. Start attending the examination. You will understand what you want to focus more on. Okay. And never run from tough questions. If some tough question is there, try attempting that tough question in the test series itself. Okay. You will end up getting lesser marks, doesn't matter. But you will get to know if you are able to attempt a tough question in examination pressure or not, or if you need to drop it or not. So if you understand that I am not made for tough questions, then at least in your examination, you are not going to hamper in those questions. Like you are not going to trouble yourself. You will just see, okay, this is a tough question that I should drop it and proceed in my other questions. But if you do not attempt tough questions in the test series only, then in the, in the examination, you might feel like that whether should I attempt it or should I drop it. So that uh, two way things will be there in your examination. And that I, that will not happen if you replicate these things in your test series only. So whatever the risk that you want to take, take those, take those risks in your test series only. Do not take the risk in the main examination. So all the risk you should take in the test series. So this is my next point only. Write test series with different techniques every time. What do I mean by that? So let's elaborate this point. So like these common queries, one was uh, like these common queries, someone would be certainly having that uh, while writing the test series, should I recheck my answer immediately or once uh, when the examination is over? Like should I recheck the answer, revisit the answer once I just attempt it or when I, I when I am done attempting the whole question paper? So try this thing with different strategy. Write one test where you just attempt a question and recheck your answer. Then attempt the other question, recheck your answer. Attempt the other question, recheck your answer. Try writing the test with one with this strategy and try another test with the, like attempt all the question and in the end you are checking all the questions one by one. So try different strategy. Try all these two strategy in all different examination. So which one is working better for you? You should put that strategy in your final exam. So in my case, what worked better for me is that, that first I would solve a problem and then immediately I would check the answer. Then solve the another problem and then immediately I would check the answer. Because in that manner, I was able to move forward in the next question more confidently. So this thing worked for me and last year, I told the same strategies to a lot of students and this strategy worked for them as well. Like once you attempt the question and you recheck it, then you are confident in that particular question that at least this question is correct. So you will be moving forward more confidently in your particular question paper. So that worked for me, but it's not necessary that it would work for everyone. So you should try whether which thing is working for you. So that's what I wrote that uh, write all the test series with different techniques. Now, when you write full and test, this doubt will come whether I should attempt aptitude first or technical first. So I also tried it with both strategies. First, I attempted aptitude, then I went to technical. And then uh, in other test series, I first attempted technical, then I went to aptitude. So it depends on you. In main examination, what I did was first I attempted technical only and then I went to aptitude. And like uh, I was more comfortable with the, this strategy only in the when I was writing test series. In the meantime, I got to know that first I should attempt aptitude only. Uh, sorry, first I should attempt technical only because once I am attempting technical, I am getting more confidence in the question paper. Then I would be going towards the aptitude part. So at aptitude part, I will not feel like that. Okay, like this is a burden for me. That will not be a burden. Because my mind would be working very good and your gate aptitude will be based on your mind only, not on your, on your memory. This thing I again and again say 
that uh, in aptitude they are not going to ask um, much question like or rarely they will ask one question which is based on some formula or some memory like uh, memory based thing like most of the problems will be there which you will be solving there only like you will be using your own aptitude and you will be solving those problems like this is not like bank exam or ssc je exam so these exams uh, in these exams if you see ssc cgl not je sorry in cgl or in these exams you would see that aptitude is coming on a good level and you are expected to remember a few things but in your gate examination aptitude is not like that i have solved previous 6 to 7 years question papers on youtube only you can watch those question paper there i have told how to solve all the problems without even remembering a single formula without even remembering a formula we are solving those problems so that thing you will understand once you write down good test series and you will understand whether you want to proceed with aptitude first or technical first so if you are attempting technical first like i, I just feel like that that if i am attempting technical first then my mind will start working in a better manner and once i go to the to the aptitude part there i will be more confident in uh, in attempting the attitude rather than just by jumping on the just by jumping onto the aptitude part so for me it worked that first i attempted technical then i went to aptitude it will it may differ for you you should see what uh, works better for you now what if i am not able to solve problems in succession let's just say i am not able to solve like one problem i saw was not able to solve second i was not able to solve third i was not able to solve fourth i, I was not able to solve fifth also i was not able to solve so if three four problems are coming and i am not able to solve all these problems then what i would do so what i used to do i used to jump on a random question like let's just say first four problems i am not able to solve then i will directly jump to a random question i would jump on 25th question and this is what i did in the examination in the main examination as well i was not able to solve uh, conjugative problems like in first 25 minutes i i was able to solve like i was able to see eight to nine problems I saw 8 to 9 problems, but oh, in those 8 to 9 problems, I was able to solve 2 3 problems only. So I just thought that I should jump to a random problem now. So I jumped to a random problem and that problem I started solving. So from there onwards, I got my speed, I got my confidence, and then I came back to those problems which I skipped in the initial part. And those problems also I was able to solve because once you get the confidence, once you get the flow, then everything will come to you by your own. So this is what happens. So always, once you are not able to solve the problems in succession, then jump to a random problem jump to a very random problem okay now how to analyze the test this is a very important part so first thing is that you should uh, try analyzing the test immediately after attempting it or at least on the same day at least on the same day on the day that you have attempted it now how you are how you will be analyzing it first you will be seeing the answer that you have done correctly so and you will see if there is a shorter approach or my approach was, was the best or there could be a better approach as well that you will see then you will go to the problems which you got wrong so you know that this answer i got wrong so i will again try attempting it let's see if i am able to get the correct answer or not if i am not able to get the correct answer then i will see the solution immediately i will see the solution just after i am not able to get the correct answer immediately i will see the solution then i will realize my mistake okay and those problems where you are not able to attempt those problems which did not occur to you or did not come to you in your examination so for those problems you will first <coughs> try revising the concept related to that let's just say there is some problem on master slave jk flip flop so that i was not able to solve so first i will try to revise that concept and then come back to that problem and i then i will then i will try to solve that particular problem if i am able to solve then it's pretty good if i am not able to solve then i will see the solution so that's how you should proceed first see the correct question see the approach then you see the incorrect one then you see if you are able to solve it now if you are not able to solve it now as well then you see the solution and those who problems which you couldn't attempt for that you should revise the concept and then come back and then try solving it if you are not able to solve then see the solution so that should be your procedure of analyzing a test and if you are taking 90 minutes of time to attempt a question paper then at least give 60 minutes time to analyze it give all the time to analysis so that you at least learn from the test series okay so give much time for analysis as well so yeah that's it from our side that's it from my side regarding the test series if you are having any other doubt you can put in the comment section and now talking about our courses so you can visit our website prepfusion.in prepfusion.in so i will put the link all the required links will be there in the description so we have free courses as well subject wise courses as well combo courses as well we have full courses as well full course for gate 126 and road to iit course for gate 125 and we have placement courses as well we have test series also mentioned right so these courses you can check out whatever the courses you require so this is the full course for gate 126 students 
So currently the price is 17,000. So if you are someone who is preparing for gate 126 under a personalized guidance and all the subjects will be covered by us only, I and Anish. So a launch video has been made. You can watch the video. There are a lot of features of the course. Along with that, you get a full course. Along with that, you get the placement course as well. So everything you are getting in this particular course. So you can go and watch the launch video. There uh, we have discussed about it. And we have subject wise courses as well. So these subject wise courses, power electronics, digital electronics, analog electronics, control systems, network analysis, uh, engineering mathematics, aptitude. So these courses are there for subject wise courses are there so that you can check out. Okay. And for separate for all the courses, launch video, video videos are there. So all the features are there. We are providing the test series as well. We are providing lecture, lecture notes as well. There is doubt solving group as well. You will be getting PDFs uh, of notes. You will be getting thousand plus problem. A lot of problems you will be getting. So everything will be there. So you can check that out and uh, these are our placement courses so these are the placement courses where uh, this is for digital design and for analog de for analog design as well there are placement courses okay so this is digital design for campus placement and this is analog vlsi mastery so whatever that is required for your placement as well that is there so yeah that's it about our courses so all these courses are there which you can check out by visiting the site prepfusion.in okay then thank you very much happy learning